If I gave you a choice to pick between two snacks, one containing natural flavors and the other artificial flavors, which one would you pick? Stupid question, right? Of course you'll pick the natural one. But tell me, what does natural flavor really mean? I mean, flavors don't grow on a farm, right? Fruits and vegetables do. Then how is it that your favorite protein powder has that perfect natural vanilla or chocolate flavor? And just because it's natural, is it any better than its artificial counterpart? If these questions about flavoring agents have confused you too, allow me to help. I'll decode the world of flavors in today's video of the Whole Truth Academy. Before I begin though, please do hit that subscribe button and follow our channel. We are a small food startup and we spend all of our marketing budgets in making this content and keeping it free. And it's your love that keeps us going. Okay, here's a fun fact. Did you know that after water, sugar and salt, natural flavor is the fourth most common ingredient found in processed foods worldwide? Wow, right? But why is everyone putting added flavors in our food? Well, if you've ever opened a packet of chips thinking, I'll just have a few pieces and ended up eating the entire bag, you know why. You see, flavorings are used to make food, well, more flavorful and to trick your brain into craving that flavor much more than it should. They enhance the taste so that when we eat a food product, it sends our taste buds buzzing and we get hooked or rather addicted to it. And when this enhanced flavor comes on top of snacks already loaded with sugar, which is another substance our primitive brains just can't resist, the result is a sensation overload our brains don't even try and fight. So yeah, literally no one can eat just one. And why do brands want their food to be so addictive? Capitalism, bhai. Capitalism. Anyways, today's video is about flavors, specifically about artificial versus natural flavors. Let's start with the basics. What's the difference between these two kinds of flavors? Well, natural flavors are flavors derived from things which grow in nature. Plants, veggies, fruits, tree barks, grass, herbs, meats, basically anything that's found in nature. So, for example, Strawberry flavor is a flavor extracted from real strawberries through various chemical processes. Hold on to that thought, I'll come back to it. Here's a question first though. If they were going to use the real fruit only, why extract its flavor? Why not use the fruit itself? Hmm. The answer lies in cost, scale and consistency. For example, according to one article, at one point, there were 10 times more grape-flavored products than grapes in the world. So that's the first benefit. Extracting flavor out of natural sources allows us to replicate and multiply their application. The second big reason is consistency. For example, oranges taste different every season. The taste differs by geography and soil and climate and size and color and whatnot. But we expect even our 100% real orange juice to taste just the same every time. How do brands achieve that? Well, natural flavors. By now I'm sure you're wondering why does this guy keep doing this quotes thingy when he says natural? Well, I do it because natural is a very abused word. Allow me to explain. Did it confuse you when I said that scientists can take strawberry and extract and multiply its taste and flavor? How are they able to do that? Well, they can because even with natural things like strawberries, the substance that imparts flavor is some chemical in that strawberry. So when brands are trying to create strawberry flavored products, here's what they do. They take some real strawberries, identify the chemical compound that gives it that flavor, extract it through a liquid carbon dioxide or alcohol extraction process, and then use a cocktail of other chemicals to expand the quantity and meet the scale of demand. And then the fun part, manufacturers aren't even required to disclose the source of the flavoring or all of its constituent ingredients or its production process. Yup, 
there is no concrete way of figuring out what the particular flavoring is. Your best bet would be to just ask the food manufacturers and legally speaking, they can tell you to f*** right off. And oh, the word natural has a very loose official definition too, it turns out. One can actually add, say, a hundred ingredients, natural or man-made. But as long as the first ingredient is natural, you get to call it a natural flavor. Well done, guys. Well done. So, that's what natural flavors are. Now, let's understand artificial flavors. Remember the flavor compound we extracted from strawberries? What if I made the same compound but in a lab? So, rather than extract anything from a strawberry, I just mimic that exact flavoring compound in a test tube. Well, that would be artificial strawberry flavor. Point to note, the end result is still the same chemical compound, just that the source is different. So now, which one would you pick? Natural flavor or artificial? The answer, now that you know the definitions, is that it most probably does not matter. More importantly, it's the wrong question to be asking. And this is the biggest trick played by the food marketeer. By changing the question to natural versus artificial, what they've done is take focus away from the real question, which is, should you be eating extra flavored food at all? Can you imagine your mom putting extra natural atta flavor in your rotis? Or natural gobi flavor to your alu gobi? <laughs> Sounds almost offensive, right? And yet, we go around eating packaged foods with added flavors. Now, the marketeer and the food scientist's argument is that, hey, these flavors are used in such minuscule quantities that it really shouldn't matter much. But hey, remember the stat I told you at the beginning? Flavors have become so ubiquitous that chances that there is added flavor in your chips, juices, teas, protein bars, protein powders, cookies, everything, even your whiskey, are very high. So, in total, the amount of these flavors you're consuming isn't small. And more importantly, if every food you eat has enhanced flavors, how do you even remember what the real fruit or vegetable tastes like? No wonder then, today most of us find a boiled potato or a simple banana flavorless. Our taste buds are so bombarded with extracted flavors all the time that we've kind of forgotten what it feels like to have real food. And that's the triple whammy that added flavors inflict. One, they make food addictive. No one can eat just one. Two, they make real food taste bland. And three, since you're usually eating added flavor on top of sugary or oily food like chips and cookies, and since real food no longer cuts it for you, and since you just can't stop yourself, you end up overloading on bad calories that have zero nutrition. All this, and the marketer wants you to focus on the fact that, hey, at least you chose natural flavoring. Do you see the trick now? This topic leaves me so sad. Oh. Anyways, allow me to repeat myself and summarize. One, natural and artificial flavors aren't much different. It's the same chemical derived differently. Two, yes, the flavoring agent is used in minuscule quantity, but it's in everything you eat and it all adds up. Three, if all you're eating is flavor enhanced stuff, you'll eventually forget what real food tastes like. So four, Please eat real food. And if you're enjoying a packet of flavored chips, enjoy it because you like the flavor, not because the flavor is natural. It doesn't matter. But by framing the question as natural versus artificial, the food marketeer is forcing you to miss the point. The point being that those chips are nutritionless crap and no one should eat even one. Okay. Allow me to end with a food hack I discovered after years and years of trying to understand my food. How do you tell the difference between food that's good for you and food that isn't? My simple answer, good, nutritious food satiates you. It does not make you eat more and more. It satisfies you and makes you stop after a while. If that's not the case with what you're eating, 
it's most probably food that's engineered to increase sales, not nutrition. And on that macabre note, please do hit that subscribe button so I can keep busting all these myths and bubbles in your life. Ciao for now.